Sorry, I'm getting over a cold. <laughs> hey guys, my name is Thomas Bresh. I'm the creator of a game called Pinstripe and also finishing up a game called Once Upon a Coma. If you want to take a look at those games, they're pretty much available on every platform, so click the link in the description. See if they're games you might be interested in. All right, so today I want to take a terrible illustration, probably the worst one you'll ever see, maybe, I don't know. And then we're going to take the terrible illustration and we're going to make it beautiful only by changing the color and the lighting. See, color is incredibly important. It's actually, I think, one of the most important parts of your game. Sound and color, in my opinion, are the most important part of at least the aesthetic of your game, how it feels, that polished look. So let's jump into Photoshop and I wanna show you how we're gonna take a terrible illustration and make it beautiful. Now before we get started guys, this video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is the sensation of the mobile world. They have 10 million mansions in just a few months and 15 million downloads in the last six months. Now what's cool is you can have 400 champions that you can personally customize and the coolest part is, is that this is all free. Um, you can simply download on your mobile device. And there's going to be some extra cool features in this game. For example, multi-battle auto mode, where you can simply set the game to play automatically in the background so that you don't have to play overnight. There's also weekly tournaments and events. And there's also a roadmap that the developers have published where they're going to have huge plans and updates for the game in the next six months. For example, new faction mode, tag team arena feature, and there's also a new clan boss mode where you can fight your own clan mates. Now, by the way, guys, my in-game nickname is Thomas Brush 90 So if this game sounds like something for you, click the link in the description, get 50,000 silver, and a free epic champion as part of the new player program. What have you got to lose? Click the link in the description and check out Raid. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is create a document 1920 by 1080. Um, and I'm just going to use, you know, terrible logic here, terrible illustration skills, and just create an illustration like I would if I was five years old. Um, mountains are green, right? So we're gonna create <laughs> some mountains, we're gonna create some clouds that look kind of like something from Wind Waker here. And clouds are white, okay. So far so good, not really, but <laughs> let's keep going. Um, more mountains. I guess they look similar to the mountains behind them, but let's maybe shift the color a little bit so they don't blend into the mountains. So I guess that's fine. Not really, but we're going to keep going and we're going to create some trees here. Um, nothing super spectacular. Again, using just bad illustration techniques to create some trees. And this is a huge problem that a lot of new illustrators have, which is they add detail to elements on the same layer, but other details, or the details aren't consistent, I guess. So we have some details, um, but not enough. So it makes things look kind of strange. But we're gonna move forward here. Let's create some ground using the lasso tool. And again, guys, we're using, if you don't know, we're, we're using the lasso tool here to fill in various shapes. So added some foreground elements and we're gonna create a character now. Um, maybe add a dog. I think he looks okay. Not really, but we're gonna move forward. The face or the shirt we can maybe fill in. Let's just choose a random color. And I know guys, a lot of these colors are random because frankly, if you're starting games, you're gonna feel like you're filling in random colors because a lot of us, myself included, we don't really know what things are gonna look like. So we just choose random colors and hope for the best. So this is how things look when you're just random and you have terrible illustration skills. This is not good. I want to stress, this looks terrible. As you can see, when we zoom out, it does not look realistic at all. It looks terrible. When you zoom out, you should have a sense that it has some kind of realism because it blurs and it looks a little bit more realistic. So we're going to create a new uh, document here and we're going to call it a color palette document. As you can see, I don't know how to spell color palette, so I'm gonna pretend that I know how to spell it, but I'm gonna make it look terrible. <laughs> Let's call this the bro and sis colors in our color palette. So we're gonna create two subcategories, bro and sis colors, and then cousins color. The bro and sis colors are two colors that are opposite one another. And these are colors we're gonna use in our document. So we're gonna choose an orangish um, red and then also a tealish green. I really like these two colors and I use these colors a lot. 
as you can see they're basically opposites um, and this one down here this cousin color it's actually just a color that is similar it's kind of um, a pastel maybe a greenish color that looks kind of cool so the cousin color we're not going to use a lot now as you can see here I'm actually now desaturating one of the colors and I like to desaturate the blue and I'll show you why in a second And we're shifting that red just a little bit so we're desaturating one and keeping one very vibrant I'm gonna paste in this rasterize image flattened image of the color palette and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that grayish blue and we're gonna apply it to every single layer using the color overlay effect and we're just gonna duplicate that color onto every single layer uh, minus the player and the rocks because we'll be doing different colors for those so this bluish color is actually gonna be this atmospheric color we use for every single layer to sort of wrap everything in a realistic gloomy color now what I'm doing is I'm actually splitting that color in half and I'm gonna make a the right side a more saturated more colorful and darker blue so it's got the same hue but it's just darker and more saturated and again saturation means more color it's not as gray now what I'm gonna do here is just rasterize every single layer commit all of those color overlays we're not gonna need to change anything about those color overlays so let's just go ahead and rasterize them so it makes things a lot simpler now what I'm gonna do is do another color overlay but we're gonna paste in this new color palette with the darker blue on the right side there and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that darker blue and as things come closer and closer towards the camera we're gonna add in more and more of that darker blue the reason why guys this is this is just simple logic about the real world as things get further from the camera they get grayer because of atmosphere and fog or smog or mist that's just the way the world works so we're making things more vibrant and also darker as they get closer and closer towards the camera so as you can see we have a lot of depth that was created just by adding in that darker blue as things get closer to the camera we're also going to decrease that the clouds a little bit and now we're going to use that vibrant red color to allow things to have a pop when you have a poor illustration I find that adding a pop of color on top of some grayish tones really makes things look professional and really unique and kind of trendy so we can add in this colorful pop of orange to the dog and and our character here and now things are looking a lot more stylized and a lot more trendy I also like to add a little bit of a bloom a glow when we have areas of high saturation it almost makes it look like there's fog and mist in the scene I'm also adding in a couple flowers here because I want to show you how we can use that cousin color so you have a little bit of green here but I don't really like it so we're just gonna go with red it depends on what you want to do you can use that cousin color if you want now you can also add in some texture from a website called pexels.com p-e-x-e-l-s and right now we've added in a cardboard looking texture which I really think makes things look uh, more childish and really we lean into that childish look believe it or not leaning into um, a weakness you have is actually a good idea because it makes things look intentional it makes you look self-aware um, so we're gonna add in some inner shadows now to all of our layers to make things look a little bit more three-dimensional and make it look like lighting is coming from the top left hand corner now believe it or not adding in um, some drop shadow could actually make your scene look like it's a cardboard cutout scene almost like Yoshi's Island this in the end I'm gonna sort of abandon but I kind of wanted to show you that you can add in drop shadow to your scene to make it look more cartoony and then what we're gonna do is on top of every single layer at the very top we're gonna use a brightness contrast adjustment so you can see here we've added in some contrast because things weren't looking contrasty enough so this is a um, kind of an industry standard thing to do guys just adding in some post-processing like brightness or contrast to make things look more filmic now what we can do is also add some blur and motion blur to things so we added motion blur to the clouds to make them feel like they're being sort of uh, streamed across the sky and then we're adding in blur so things are blurrier the further away from the camera they are so you can see we're adding blur to a lot of blur to the mountains in the background and then slowly adding less and less blur now there's also gonna be a lot of blur and foreground elements and you can look at games like Hollow Knight that do this really well and this is gonna make things look uh, more stylized more interesting and also allow us to focus on the player 
And then here I'm just using some lighting techniques to add in a little bit of drop shadow um, or shadow from the trees. And it's actually being cast in the wrong direction. Um, but overall, I think it looks pretty decent. I'm also gonna add a subtle vignette at the top to make it look like the sky has a gradient and a, and a sunset feel. I'm gonna shrink the size of this water tower. And then one of my favorite things to do after I'm done is actually shift the colors a little bit. So what we're gonna do is shift more towards the blue side, but we're gonna add a gradient to it, a gradient mask. So it starts green at the top and as it goes towards the bottom, it's bluish. This is kind of how the world works. Things, the, the horizon is a different color than when you look straight up into the sky, especially at evening. Then I'm gonna add an inverted mask and then go a little bit more towards the red so the top of the um, image is red. And now we're gonna add in some birds. And you'll notice that adding in subtle details like the title, some UI elements um, will really make your, your image pop it'll make you excited about your game and also this is a great way to pitch your game on social media and also when you're sending emails out to publishers add in the title add in a press start um, icon maybe even add in some ui elements like hearts or um, in this case i really like adding cinematic bars even though a lot of games don't have cinematic bars this makes your game look really professional. I don't even know why, but adding in the intentionality of cinematic bars and even some hearts here. Um, and we're gonna use that same vibrant orange color to make the hearts pop. You'll notice that adding these elements make things look way more professional um, than they definitely look way more professional than they started out. And we're gonna add in some text here. And overall guys, this is how it can look a terrible looking illustration turned into something that's manageable and slightly professional. So what'd you guys think? It's pretty simple once you get the hang of the principles of color to make something that looks terrible look halfway decent. If you guys enjoyed this video, if you thought it was interesting or helpful, please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, hit the like icon, leave a comment, do all those cool things. And also remember you can support me on Patreon, uh, get a free copy of Pinstripe, which was my first commercial release. And as always guys, thank you so much. I'll talk to you later, bye.